Hi there, Loaded 4x4 fans. It's David Wilson, your editor at large. And today I'm up in the scenic Barossa Valley at Adventure 4 Wheel Drive HQ on this glorious day. Have a look at that blue sky, it's magnificent. Now, I need to get a disclaimer out the way right away because we're gonna be talking about tyres in just a minute. And the disclaimer is that I'm a great fan of Toyo's product. I've been using them for a long, long time, about 15 years now. And one thing I would like you to know is that the vast majority of the time I pay for my tyres. So what you're hearing falling out of my mouth is based on honest dinkum information because I've shelled out money to buy these tyres. Now, Toyo have slipped us a set of the art to trial out and we've had them on a variety of vehicles in this last year. In the first instance, Steen had it on the Defender for about 15, 20,000 Ks. They've seen time on Rose's MUX over in Western Australia and locally around Adelaide. And now they're spending time on the D-Max doing local South Australian training duties across the length and breadth of the state. So we've got some good mileage on all of these products. So that's the, the little disclaimer, needed to get that out the way. Now you're probably also wondering, David, why are you in your orange tops? Well, it's because just earlier today, I delivered a full drive training course, had to get into the right clobber, the safety clobber. So that's why you're seeing me and the D-Max here today. All right, let's talk about the tyres. So let's start with our investigation of the Toyo Light Track range with this fella. This is the OPAT, Open Country All Terrain Series 2. So these Open Country All Terrains have been around for a while. The original generation, I can remember going back to 120 Prado days. So what would that be? Early 2000s, something like that. And then the second generation probably came out about five to six years ago. Uh, both patterns I've run successfully on both the D-Max and before that uh, some Navaras that we used to run, D40s, and very successfully. So if you're newish to four-wheel driving and looking to get a, a replacement set of tyres going, I reckon this is a pretty good starting point to kick off with. Now, an all-terrain pattern is going to be the most universal for you because it's going to do a fabulous job around town. And the beauty with the OPAT setup is that the tread blocks here are relatively uniform. The gaps, the voids between the tread blocks are big enough to cop an ingestion of say sand or mud, whatever. But inside the grooves then, we'll have a look at that with a close up in a little while's time, are these ejection ridges. So there are these little points that are inserted alongside the tread blocks where the mud or rocks or gravel might get in there, but they're spat out with the next revolution of the tire. So that's a good thing. The sipes are really important on this tyre because these, these cuts on the tread face there that you can see are called the sipes and it's their job to suck moisture off a of bitumen road. And this is why this tyre is absolutely fabulous on wet bitumen roads. There's been plenty of times I've been driving up in the Adelaide Hills during the course of winter and been able to go around corners like the cars of sports car and I'll put it largely down to the ability of this tyre to drain water off the road. They do a really, really good job. The carcass of this tyre is really strong. This particular one is an LT26570R17. It's got a 121 load index. So that's 1,450 kilograms of carrying capacity. So the carcass on this is as tough as old boots. You won't be putting holes into one of these anytime soon. And another thing that I've come to note with Toyo's rubber compounds is that they are compliant. So a tyre like this run in the Australian Outback with the correct pressures will not chip or tear, which is something you can't say for a lot of American brands that I've uh, had in my care in the past or, or seen out in the field. So this is a very durable tyre. Now typically in my usage, I manage to eke out anywhere between 80 to 90,000 Ks with a set of these iPads, and even then, there'll still be a couple of millimetres worth of tread depth left. In other words, they're not down to the tread where indicated. So conceivably, you know, somebody who was being a bit more frugal, they might be able to um, um, get another 10,000 kilometres out of it. But I don't like to wear them down to that point. I think it's better to have a decent amount of rubber on the road, particularly when you're going full driving. So the OPAT, I reckon, is a great place to start. So if you've got passenger car tyres on your vehicle from brand new, you're looking to go up um, to something that's a lot more better and dedicated to doing some off-road tasks a little more effectively, this is a great place to start. Toyo Open Country 2. Now, many of you will be familiar with mud terrains. You will have seen them on videos, seen them in magazines, being used in all sorts of wet weather environments. And if you're driving in a niche environment like that, I would recommend a muddy to you. But if you're driving around town, 
I really think that the value of a mud terrain is a little questionable. Now, Toyo's mud terrain is a great tyre. We've used them on this D-Max in winter up here at uh, Adventure 4 Drive HQ when it's sloshy and it will plough through deep mud and clay like nobody's business, a bit like an old tractor tyre. But far from being tractor tyre noisy, the, the thing that really surprises me about this muddy is the noise levels are actually quite reasonable. It's, it's not like one of those situations where you've got to reach to the volume knob on the stereo and crank it up full tilt to try and drown out the noise of the tyres. Nothing like that at all. Now, the characteristics of this Toyo mud terrain are that it has this great over the shoulder tread pattern. So you'll see not only this deep lug, this aggressive tread pattern in the tread face there, but it also extends to going over into the shoulders there. So if you can imagine you were driving down a typical muddy old rut and you're looking for some extra purchase, well, it's almost like breaststroke. The sidewalls of the tyres are grabbing the vertical planes of the rut and pulling the car through. So it adds an advantage in the grip levels, which is always very, very handy to have. Now, all of that is worth naught if the tyre carcass weren't strong enough, because quite often you'll see people coming to grief out in the field when they're driving in muddy conditions like that, where the sidewall's been compromised because as they've gone through that deep rut, a tree root or maybe a, a lump of rock or something like that has penetrated the sidewall of the tyre and put a dead great big hole in it. Well, the beauty with Toyo's uh, tread carcass is it's very, very strong. It's a 10 ply rating tyre, but it has three polyester belts that overlap the entire tread uh, area, go around the circumference of the tyre and this spiral wound. They, they call them high turn up. So what happens is that they wrap these polyester uh, layers of belts around the bead area and go back over the tyre, around the bead area and come back again. So they do that three times and that affords this tyre with incredible strength. I know that I've pushed it up against stakes and all sorts of stuff in the past and uh, Touchwood never once had a tyre been compromised. If we have a look at the, the tread pattern in here, it is very, very aggressive. But the unique thing with, with Toyo is they've thought about the downsides of muddies typically, which has been lots of noise and also poor bitumen grip by making the tread blocks uh, triangulated. So they've got this unique 90 degree angle to them that stops the tread blocks from squirming around. So when you chuck a vehicle into a, a bitumen corner at high speed on a typical muddy, these tread blocks start to squirm and that creates a degree of instability with the vehicle, which doesn't feel too good from the driver's seat. But these tread blocks stay upright and rigid and do what they're supposed to do and that's get you around a corner. True to Toyo's tradition, they also have deep sipe. So the sipe is this cut in the tread face here, and its job is to squeegee moisture off the road. So these things do a damn fine job in wet weather on bitumen. A lot of muddies, you often hear that they lose grip and they tend to slide around a bit. Well, not so with these, uh, which is a great thing. And they also have ejectors, again, as is the Toyo tradition, ejectors in the deepest part of the tread voids there to fling out any rocks or mud that might uh, collect in there. So this is a very, very competent tyre off-road, obviously, especially in, in wet conditions because that's what it was designed for, but it'll also work across a whole heap of other driving parameters that you might see. So this particular Toyo Muddy is one of my favourite sizes. It's an LT light truck, 265-75R16. Really tall sidewall height there to get some flexibility. But here's the kicker. It's got a 123 load index, which means it's really strong. I use a Benchmarker 120, which is 1400 kilograms for all of my tyre purchases. This, this one is even stronger again, up at 1550 kilograms. You'll never put holes in one of those carcasses. Now I'm really excited about this one because this is Toyo's recently released rugged terrain, the RT. Now this is a quite an unusual tyre because Toyo like to describe it as a hybrid because it's a halfway house between the all-terrain and the muddy and you can see that by looking at the tread pattern. So in the first instance if we have a look at the tread face there you can see that on the tops of the tread blocks are these little steps and they do a good job of locating the tyre on the road and to stop some of the, the squirm. As, as they wear down, we get down into the uh, 
buttress part of the, the tread block, if you like, which has got a lot more strength and stability in it. So it gives us great cornering capability. This tire also runs the very same carcass that the mud terrain does. And you might be interested to know that both of those carcasses are made in America. So these two are an American made tire. The all terrain is a Japanese made tire. Now, the central part of the tread area here is formed up with a series of interlocking L-shaped tread blocks. And it is more uniform than say the one on the mud terrain and slightly less aggressive. So that's what gives it good steering capability and braking capability on the bitumen around town. So it does the crossover job of going bush and running around town very, very competently. So this thing stops a treat, it steers a treat. Very, very good. It also has in the tread blocks the deep sipes, which is a, a common Toyo trait uh, to squeegee moisture off the road. So that enhances its wet weather ability by a country mile. And the, the tread design out here on the shoulders overlaps into the sidewall area as it does with the mud terrain. So this RT has the same shoulder scallops that you find on the mud terrain. So if you go into a deep rut, you're looking for some extra purchase on the vertical sides of that rut. These shoulder blocks, if you give the steering a little bit of a wiggle, they'll engage with the, the surface and pull the car through. So that's incredibly advantageous if things are getting a bit slippery. I think the other thing we should probably do is have a look at what this tie tag says on the tread face. So let's have a look at that. We'll just drop that down. I think it's worth having a look at the tag that's on the tread face of the uh, RT here because it sets out exactly what this, this tire is all about. So we can see what it is. It's an open country product. RT means rugged terrain. The tire size, again, is my favourite size. LT, light truck. So it's talking about the construction of the tire, the fact that it has 13 millimetres worth of tread depth. And that's an interesting point to make because passenger car tyres only come with 9mm worth of tread depth, so they wear out pretty quickly. But with 13, they go a lot further. So, uh, 13 mm worth of tread depth, courtesy of the light track construction. Uh, 265 is the sectional width of the tyre measured in, in millimetres. 75 is what they call the aspect ratio. It's the height of the tyre measured as a percentile of the face width. So if I were to get the, the magic uh, um, measuring stick out and we were to measure up in here, we'd see that 75% of the width of that tyre would constitute the height of the tyre in there. R is radial ply construction, talking about the inner weave of the tyre. 16 is the inch diameter of the wheel that fits inside it. And we're very, very lucky to have CSA alloy wheels supplies with some wheels to fit up on these tyres for today's uh, extravaganza. Um, and then we go to the all important load in index. And those of you who've been reading my columns over the years will know how important I find load index is when you go to purchase a tyre. Now this particular one is a 123 load index. It shares the same carcass as the, the Toyo mud terrain. So they're very, very strong and they can carry an incredible load, 1,550 kilograms, albeit at 80 PSI. And of course, nobody in their right mind is gonna be doing that. But it is good to know that uh, it's got that higher capacity. And that for me, folks, is the true barometer of tire strength. That tells me that this thing is going to be very, very impervious to rock damage and stick damage. It's also Q-speed rated, which is 160 kilometers an hour. And that's plenty fast enough, given that we're legally only allowed to drive at uh, 110 kilometers an hour. And lastly, 10 ply rating. And we're going to have a bit of an understanding about ply ratings right now. So just a moment ago, I mentioned ply ratings. This tire has a 10 ply rating carcass, and I think that needs a little bit of an explanation. Now, if I look on the sidewall here, I can see that it nominates in the tread area of the tire, we've got two steel belts, three polyester belts, and two nylon belts. And by chance, I've just happened to bring up with me today a section of the mud terrain. And remember, the mud terrain and the RT use exactly the same carcass. So let's have a look at the layers that are encased in this tire here. So we'll see out on the outside there, there are the steel belts and you'll see the wires are sitting in there. They're laid up nice and evenly. And just below it are the nylon belts. And then as we come out here into the sidewall area, we'll pick up that spiral cap winding that I was talking about. So we've got three polyester uh, belts that run around the circumference here, do a loop around the bead area and go back into the tire and come back around that side. So 
This is like a, a halo, if you like, of, of rigidity and stay, safety. It, it stops the tyre from getting punctured from intrusions from the sidewall. Also gives the tyre a lot of stability, so as you go around corners, it doesn't deflect too much when you're at higher speeds on the bitumen and adds up to a miraculous tyre that does a really good job. I wanted to just quickly finish up with this, and that is a talk about the durability, the longevity of these tyres. So here's a brand new RT. It's got the traditional light truck value of 13 millimetres worth of tread depth. This particular set of tyres, these RTs that Toyo have given us to trial, have been worked in a number of different environments. So they've been in a, a craggy old British uh, wagon, the Defender, love that car by the way. And Steen took that vehicle with these tyres into the Vic Alps and also the Simpson Desert. It's been on Rose's MUX, a Japanese wagon, quite a different vehicle and that did that big trip across the Western Australia with a camper trailer on the back and all the holiday load. And it's also done a couple of trips up into the Flinders Ranges in South Australia on that same vehicle and just recently it's been installed on the work D-Max engaged in the delivery of the training courses in and around South Australia. Now if I put the caliper onto the tread depth here and just find out how much tread depth we've got going, there we go, and I'll look in here, I can see that there's about six and a half mil worth of tread depth left, about six to six and a half. So we're at halfway and having clocked up around 45,000 kilometres, maybe a bit more, it's wearing exceptionally well. We're getting a great long old life out of these tyres. So I can certainly recommend them to you in terms of their durability states. So that's the story on Toyo's RT, the Rugged Terrain. It's a fabulous tyre that'll work against a host of different variables that you're going to throw up against it. So it could be in rocks, it could be in mud, it could be on sand and even around town. It'll do a really great job and you'll find it at your nearest Toyo reseller.